to sing the way you want to sing and not do that. And it's much more natural as the way you should sing. And then that's when he taught me. And that was like a big breakthrough. And that was probably in like 96, around that time. <coughs> I did a record called Wave of Emotion that was not supposed to be called that. My record company made me change the title. It was supposed to be called Degeneration. <laughs> they wouldn't release it for some reason. I don't understand it. But that's another problem in the music business. See, you get all these people giving you ideas and they end up screwing you up. Control but, freaks. <laughs> They're called control that's freaks. Right. <laughs> but after that record, when I got the other note. So even if you notice, if you listen to my records after that record, you'll notice a change in my voice. I think it's better. I'm more comfortable. Any other question? I thought I saw a hand up. Yeah. What kind of acoustics are you using now? Uh, I have a, a couple of acoustics. Um, I have uh, Yamaha has hooked me up with some pretty nice guitars, and I've used those on uh, acoustic tours that I've done. And uh, I have a really nice tailor that I bought a long time ago that I, I use in the studio sometimes. And I also have a guitar that I bought in Osaka, Japan. That is the coolest looking guitar. It's called a Hardaway. I never heard of it before, but it, it lives in my living room. And I bought it only because like the wood is so cool. It matches my furniture. <laughs> it's like 400 bucks, and I, I took it home and I set it up, and it has some kind of pickup in it. But it sounds really cool. I, 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 I love the guitar. It's um and it's like little. It's not like a short scale, but it's a smaller feeling guitar. And there's a new record I'm about to release called Peace Sign, September 9th. And there's a song in there called Larger Than Life where it starts out with just that guitar. And I don't even think I mic'd it. I think it's just plugged in with the internal mic. It sounds pretty cool. It's one of the better acoustic tones I've gotten. And it's just some cheap, like, you know, no name of the guitar. Yeah. Yes. Do you ever play any old songs from Electric Joy? No. No. I mean, not, not that I don't like it, but I mean, I, I haven't even. Hey, that's right by my house, that shirt you're wearing. Oh, big Cool. I live right up the street. Anyway, um, the, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I haven't, because it's, it's almost like it's a different person in a lot of ways, you know? And that record is an interesting record. It's a record that almost never got made. What had happened was I did my first instrumental record, and then the second record I did was a vocal record. And my contract got bought out by a big record company, and part of the deal was that I had to deliver one more record to the old label, and it could not be a vocal record. And I had already all these vocal songs ready. You know, that's what I was doing. I like totally for, said, I'm not doing instrumental, and that's it. And so I, they said, it has to be instrumental. So that's when I did that record. And as a result of that, I think it came out kind of cool, because I had a different attitude on that record than the first one. And the first record, I was trying to play as crazy as I could. On that record, there's still some crazy playing, but I think there's more melodies on it, and the songs are more like written like uh, vocal songs, you know. So that was kind of a cool record for me to do. Yeah. Um, do you uh, sing the song Angel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my favorite favorite song. <laughs> funny, man, because I am, you know, I've been making these records since I was 18, and I have all these songs, and I forget, I forget my own stuff, because I don't go back and, and listen to myself over and over. I listen to myself, when I just make a record, I'll listen to that record like a hundred times before I decide to put it out, and everybody around me starts to hate me, because they think, well, all you do is listen to yourself. <laughs> I just listen to it for that period, and then I never put it on again, and then I move on, and then I write some new songs, and the whole thing starts over and over and over. What's the name of that 
That's all on Into the Black, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, the idea, I have, uh, my buddy and I did that together, uh, Richie Zito and I did that whole record together, and um, our, you know, we didn't even know if we were going to release it, and then we decided, you know what, let's just put it on iTunes for now until we figure out what we're doing with it. And so, it, it is there, unfortunately, there's no CD. People keep saying, you know, I'm like, I don't know, if you have iTunes, you can burn one and you have a CD. <laughs> but I know people want the artwork and all that stuff, but right now it's just a collection of tunes. It's living on iTunes. It's a cool record. It's some of the, you know, some meaningful tunes on there for me, you know, like The Road and some of that stuff. So, you know, it's a cool record. It's a departure from the other stuff I normally do. How many people have that? Yeah. <laughs> Richie. Yeah. And what can you tell us about recording with Great House? What the first record? You remember anything? Yeah, I remember a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, the recording process is interesting for me because whenever I get an idea for a song, I go and record it. In other words, it, it might not be a record making time. It just might be that, you know, I have a really cool idea for a tune and I go in the studio, record it, and it'll live on the hard drive until it's time to, to make a record. And then in a perfect world, I'll go back and maybe I have five or six, you know, things already recorded from the past and I can decide, well, I like this, I don't like that. And you know, from there, I kind of formulate a record. And that's sort of what I did on the new record. It's called Peace Sign. And I had written three tunes. Um, Larger Than Life, there's one called World Famous, another one called Lie to Me. And they were recorded and uh, done, you know, finished, uh, ready to be mastered. And then a couple other ones came up and I recorded those. And then after I have five or six, I'm like, eh, I feel like I'm getting into like a mode here where I might have a record coming together. So I ended up, uh, you know, writing the rest of it. And on this record, I did everything except for four songs I had my buddy play drums on. I did everything mm -hmm. myself. Um, not because I'm a control freak, but just because that's just the way the process went. I got an idea, I went in, sat behind the drums, played a drum take, started overdubbing, moving some things around. Next thing you know, you know, I'm halfway through the recording. Um, and then some of the songs, I can't play on the drums what I hear in my head, so I got to call somebody. So uh, yeah. I call in my buddy Dan, and he comes in and kills it. So he's the same guy that played on the Wilson Hawk yes. record, and if you saw Live in Sao Paulo, he was on that yeah. uh, CD and DVD as well, so he came in and played on four songs, and, and I did the rest of it. But it's it's kind of a cool record. It's like uh, it's almost a mix in a in a way. Uh, it reminds me there's some elements of um, a wave of emotion in this mm -hmm. new record where it has some more of a, a funkier mm -hmm. kind of Funk. thing going. There's a song called Your Entertainer that has kind of a really cool, well, I, mean, I think it's cool, bass line where <laughs> the bass is doing this kind of crazy thing and then the melody follow, guitar follows it and the voice follows it. And, uh, I think it's a cool record, so it'll be out September 9th. Right. Rich, Thanks, Rich. Is, this, is, is that guy Dan is in this band that you're put tomorrow? No, tomorrow on? night uh, I have, um, I've been touring with a drummer from Venezuela his name is Damien Ariaga, and he's really great. And uh, he's done uh, South America last tour with me, and he's done uh, a month and a half we spent in Europe. Nice. Uh, the bass player that I was using, uh, um, uh, well, since the video, there's been another guy. Okay, that guy has <laughs> now moved on to something else. So the guy I'm playing with Tuesday on bass is the first gig that we're actually doing together. <laughs> So, well. <laughs> I hope the wheels don't come off. No. I, this guy's great. He's really good. So, uh, as long as he shows up. Uh, <laughs> it should be good. Yeah. Do you have um, an album of yours that's your favorite or that you're most proud of? Um, you know, there's Mother moments family. that I'm proud of. Like, like when I hear like the song, like certain songs, I get excited. Like, um, like Fooled Again for me. For some reason, that mm. tune, I'm like. I think I really nailed it on that. Like, as far as like 